Hey guys, so I've got something really exciting. This is the BBC micro bit. Now, you may have heard of it, you may not have done, but this is a small microcontroller that's gonna be going out to pretty much every year seven student in the country. They're about 11 years old. And there's an awful lot of them. The BBC are planning to produce a million of these boards in the initial run. So they'll be going out to kids and to teachers, and the BBC have sent me one to review. Uh, I think it's because I left loads of social media breadcrumbs around saying that I really wanted one. Anyway, I used to use a BBC Micro. This is, you know, late 80s, early 90s at school, which was a computer that they made. BBC and Acorn made it together. So that was an amazing experience and it really shaped my future. So I'm hoping it'll, this will do the same for kids these days. So let's take a closer look. So here it is. This is the BBC Micro bit. We've got quite a lot going on on the board here. And we've also got a little bit going on the front. Uh, so we'll go through that shortly. So on the back here, you can see that we've got a couple of microchips here. We've got two processors. This one here is a Nordic processor, the NRF51822, which is a 16 megahertz 32 bit chip. It's um, an ARM Cortex M0 processor. It's got 256 kilobytes of flash memory, 16 kilobytes of static RAM, and it also has Bluetooth low energy built in. So the other chip we've got on here is an interesting one. This one's a Freescale Kinetis device. It's a 48 megahertz ARM Cortex M0 Plus chip, and it's running at 48 megahertz. This one enables USB communication, enables USB on the go, but it also enables this to be a USB drive. So this is how you'd get your code onto the micro bits. There's, there's a few different IDEs, as it were, but they don't upload to the board for you. So you create your hex file, your code, and then you drag it onto what would be detected as a, a USB drive. And that automatically gets uploaded to the Nordic chip. Now the micro bit was designed to be a portable device. So you've got a battery connector there. It runs off two AAA batteries. Well, it will run off two normal AA batteries as well, but it came with this little triple A battery holder with a little uh, pin plug on there. We've got a reset button on the back and then we've got this 20 pin header at the bottom. Now this has been designed so that you can use these banana plugs similar to these so that you can plug them into the board. And it also has this edge connector that will potentially be able to slot into another device or perhaps an adapter for a breadboard. Now you can see on the back here, we've got some text and it's telling us there's a, a compass and an accelerometer. And we've also got our Bluetooth low energy antenna up there. Now that means that this one can detect its orientation and its acceleration. On the other side of the board, we have two buttons, A and B, very simple. Uh, we've got the same edge connector here with a few labels. So you've got pin zero, one, two, 3.5 volts and ground. And then we've got our 25 LED matrix. Now these LEDs can be individually addressed and they can also be dimmed and brightened as well. So they have PWM control. At the moment, it's showing a little example where we can tilt the device to move which LED is on. And the idea is that you would chase the other LED and catch it, and then it would go somewhere else. So it's a really neat little board. Let's have a look at how you would go about programming it. Right, so when you first plug in your micro bit, you get it pop up as a drive. So we've got the micro bit here. We can just have a quick look at what it says about it. So it's a fat file system and it's around eight megabytes. I'm not sure where they're fitting that eight megabytes, but uh, that's good. So we get uh, a little text document that says the DAP link firmware. That's the, the DAP link is the ability for it to, um, in fact, we can have a look. So this is the DAP link. Uh, what is the DAP link? The DAP link is the software that runs on the interface chip of an embed enabled board. It provides USB interface that allows you to drag and drop binaries onto the target microcontroller. So that's exactly as we explained before. Um, but it's sort of visualized here. You can see which firmware it's running. And it also has on the drive itself a HTML file. 
So if we open that, it will take us to the BBC micro bit website. And this is where we can start creating code. So just up here, well actually on the website itself, there's an awful lot of information, loads of great examples. Someone's already sent it up into uh, high altitude, uh, but we can just click on create code. And then we've got four options here for creating code. So you can use Python if that's the language you prefer. And then there's a couple of Microsoft options and then one that's a bit more like JavaScript. Now, one of the Microsoft ones is really interesting. So it's this block editor. Now these aren't sort of high level languages. These are giving you the ability to program quickly. Now remember this is designed for, for seven year olds. So this is sort of a lot more about logic and program flow than it is about remembering syntax. So we can easily drag this in here, uh, tick a few of these things, and then we can run our code and it will show up on this little device here. So that's what we would see on our micro bit. So there's lots of ability here to use loop, logic, variables. There's a bit of maths in here. Um, some things focusing on the LEDs, so we can set the brightness. Uh, let's set the brightness down to 25. Oops. And then we can click run again and it should display very dimly on here. So if we were going to run that on the microcontroller, we would see it better on the, the webcam. So we've also got some pins that we can interact with. Images is an interesting one. It allows you to create scrollable images. And then you've got devices as well. So let's create something new. Um, a really, really simple one to do on this would probably be a dice. So let's give that a go. So we want to go into basic. So we've got forever. And then let's grab input on button A pressed. Oh, I'm not sure we need forever actually. Let's get rid of that. And then input on button A pressed. Logic maths. Okay, uh, let's go for LED, no, basic show number logic variables maths show number pick random number zero to and then we're going to show the number dice that's relatively easy isn't it let's see if that works that's five, six, one. That appears to work. Now what we're going to do is going to compile that and then we're going to, oh, it's downloaded already. So there's our micro bit there. Let's find the code. And then all I do is just copy it to the micro bit and we'll upload it. And then it should automatically change on the screen here. So it's done. We've got nothing displaying to tell us it's working. I have to press a button. So there we go. We've got six, six again, six again, one. I didn't think it was working there for a second. <laughs> We've got four, two. So it does work. You could add some fancy animations in there, but that was literally me playing around with it for 10 minutes, having first seen the software. So. It's interesting. So to round up, I really like the micro bit. I think it's a lovely form factor. Uh, it's got a nice chip on there. The Bluetooth Low Energy is a great addition. I didn't have a chance to play around with that yet, but uh, the programming environment is really, really interesting for kids. I think that's going to be a great way of interacting with this board in a simple way. Being able to uh, just upload your programs, drag and drop, plug a couple of AAA batteries in and then away you go really. I think that's, it's an awesome little board. I didn't read this before I started, which was a mistake and I should have done. So really I had myself a, a bit of a disadvantage. Now for the, for the kids that are going to be using these, they'll be getting them for free. So it's a million of these going out. They're going to be walked through this as part of their 
key stage education. There'll be teachers on hand to help them out with this. So I think they're going to create some really, really awesome things, especially since it's got an accelerometer, it has uh, a compass on board, the ability to output audio and connect via Bluetooth. That's pretty fantastic, especially, and they can use it at home without installing any software because it comes up as a USB drive. So they can do it all online, download the code and put it straight onto their device. I can see this being really, really popular. Now, it's nothing like the old BBC Micro that I learned how to program in BASIC on would be using these, um, well, they were Logo Turtles, I think they were called. So you'd create your program in Logo, Turtle Graphics, and then you'd send it to the robot and it would uh, meander its way around the floor. So I think it looked, well, it looked nothing like programming does for the BBC Micro bit. But I'm very excited by this device. I, I do actually think people will want to use this at an older age than seven or maybe even younger. They'll certainly want to pick one up. I think they'll probably be relatively cheap if they ever get released commercially. But I'm hoping kids are going to get right behind this and start programming amazing things.